Back about 23 minutes past four, and I'm delighted to welcome the old sidekick, a man who's been, well, racing on Saturday and texts me and says, well, who's going to win? I don't know. Jack Elson, how are you, son? <laughs> Not bad, thank you. And you didn't have any tips that came through. In fact, I, I, I think I lost every single race. Yeah, but I didn't have any tips. <laughs> did, you, did, you did you lose every race? Yeah, every single it's one. It's a very happy story. This, I know. Is it? Thank you, mate, for coming on. Um, but that, Listen, I'm going to start, because the sun's always central to this. Um, uh, for your information, Jack Elson is the chief political uh, commentator, uh, or cor correspondent? Correspondent. Uh, says commentator here, from the Sun Ledger, and we're honoured to have him. Um, it is astonishing to me, but it isn't astonishing mm. to me, that a little over two months after, just not even two months, since Keir Starmer won the election, suddenly everybody's going, oh, let me get this right. So all these unions are getting pay rises that we can't afford, which presumably means other unions will demand pay rises we can't afford. Apparently now it's going to be easier to strike. You can mm. be released as a prisoner. You can get £10 for taking a zombie knife into a police station. Mm. But if you carry a brick down the road, you can get 10 years, not £10. That's quite relevant. Um, the online safety bill seems to have changed. The rhetoric about everybody being far right. Too, too many people are now scared to do anything. And the small boats crisis, just as the cherry on top of the cake on top of the whatever, is worse than it's ever been. And we're getting texts from people going, oh, my God, oh, my God, this doesn't look like it's going to be very good. No, because Jack Elson, is it not true to say you can promise to pay for things, but you have to be able to pay for them? Yeah, the problem is, is that I think Keir Starmer and his ministers are finding out pretty quickly that campaigning is one thing, but government is just a whole different kind of fish. Why are you fish. smiling at that? You really are, aren't you? Because it's joyous <laughs> for us all here. Because it's hard. But obviously, you know, when it's just bashing the Tories over the head, you know, in every which way and different issues, it's very easy. You know, I could do it in my sleep if I wanted to. The problem is that government requires um, tough decisions um, and also a bit of expectation management. And yeah, Labour, really have al Labour have always had a uh, relationship with the unions. They are basically their paymasters, uh, and the unions um, back uh, Labour financially uh, to the tune of uh, millions of pounds every year. And this got this, this thing today that it turns out, I mean, I, I, you surely must have known this, half of Labour MPs are in the pay of unions and would have received uh, mm. donations towards their electoral campaigns. As Richard Tice just said, can you imagine if that had been the Tories or Reform? Yeah, and I was actually surprised it was uh, it was it was only half. I was surprised it wasn't more. And I'm sure as the Parliament goes on, um, and you know MPs need more staff, maybe or an extra pay rise for a researcher, then um, you know, that number might increase a bit. Um, I think also, listen, like there's obviously going to be some sort of quid pro quo. If someone is paying you a lot of money, then there may be an element of we should probably do things which are you know beneficial to the unions and, and the labor movement has always been linked to the unions you know it sort of came out in the 1920s you know from 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 that whole uh, working class movement i think the problem was especially with some of these pay deals is that labor came in and they wanted a series of very quick wins to show to the public and therefore they can develop a message going ah this was just sheer Tory incompetence. We've come in and with a few days we've managed to, you know, turn around the the doctor strike, we've turned around the uh, the train driver strikes. The problem with that is twofold. One it's a lot of money on the table which is. they are paying. And secondly, in terms of the dry train driver strikes, it looks like they've been taken for a bit of a ride because Excuse not only they've sat Train drivers are set to rake in 81 grand a year for mm. a four-day week after their deal with the Aslef Union, which funds it. You say quick wins, but very quickly, because I this is the thing that we talked about during the election campaign. I think the British people are, yes, cynical, yes, less... If, less interested but i think they're more switched on than they've ever been so in two months i think people are going hold on a minute you've offered doctors 22 percent, but you've taken the money away from pensioners heating allowance you've already lost six million votes like that yeah and you know pensioners are going to be absolutely up in arms with this and uh it was one of the questions asked to rachel reeds when she first announced that you know you're basically taking away from pensioners to fund junior doctors who are actually you know are paid pretty well on, on and the haven't whole. given anything to the society like pensioners have all their lives. Well, yeah, you know, I don't know. There some people probably argue that junior doctors, you know, do give back to, no, <laughs> give I'm back talking, to the society. No, no, I'm talking if you're 17, you pay tax for 50 yeah, years. No, I, you've yes. given a lot more than some jumped up little mm. squirt who's been training to be a doctor for a yes. month. I, I understand. I understand. I understand the argument, but also there's a lot of pensioners who probably don't need winter fuel payments, and so you know. I, all right, I, I well, at least means there, tested. It, 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 but yes. come on, you know, yes. don't take it away from people who, you know, who mean it. Yeah, you know, I, I just, I just think they've. I, I, honestly, I thought your phrase then is great. Uh, the reality yeah, exactly. of the government is very different to opposition. And it's, it was quite bizarre because Labour spent the entire campaign 
sort of saying there's going to be tough choices and they're not going to be much money. They've come out and they've said that they've done this audit and autopsy of the government accounts and it is very difficult. But how does that square with giving train drivers who are already very, very well paid, £65,000 the average anybody, salary, Well, how has anybody forgotten the doctors at 22%? Nurses took 5% under Pat Cullen last year before she stood for Sinn Féin or whatever it was. Mm. 5%? I know. And this is going to be the issue now, is that if you give uh, a big pay rise to one group, mm -hmm. then you're going to be playing whack-a-mole for the rest of your term. Absolutely. Because you're going to have another one pop up and go, well, hang on a minute. If they're getting 22%, we've got 5%. That doesn't, that doesn't seem very fair. But that, to me, that makes perfect sense. Mm. Of course you're going to play whack a while because of course they're all going to go, understandably. He said that, I want that. She said that, I want that. Mm. This, this will result in raised taxes. This will be pure, I think, unadulterated socialism on every which level that you can possibly imagine. And I think that the British public will wise up quite quickly and go, geez. And that will happen. Yeah, and uh, I think the next budget, which we're going to get uh, in late October, we are going to see a complaint, uh, as it's known, kitchen sinking in the sort of business world, where the Labour government will try and raise as many taxes as they can, because they only really have one opportunity to do it. They can't do it next year or the year after. They have to do it in the first year, because that's the only time they can legitimately say to the public, oh, you know, it's a very tough decision, but it's not... It was basically out of our hands. You know, it was all down to the last lot. And so they ruled out basically three quarters of revenue raises. So they can't do VAT, no. income tax, national insurance. They've got very strict spending limits because of the sort of national debt rules which uh, Rachel Reeves has put in place. But you can expect um, taxes which probably target the wealthier side of society. So capital gains tax, inheritance tax, it's just pension relief, that sort of stuff does great for encouraging people to be successful. Uh, the other thing is, which we love to go on about in the station, because it's all anybody wants to talk about, uh, the Channel migrant crossings mm. are at the highest since Starmer came to power. Mm. They haven't committed to a plan on that. They haven't committed to a, saying when that 2.5% GDP will be paid on defence. Promises are one thing. Somebody said to me, well, you, I, I haven't said this to you, I'm really interested in your thought. The way to win a general election is to gather together a group of disillusioned, you know, disenfranchised people and mm. tell them what's wrong with their lives and who's to blame about it. Mm. You don't tell them how you're going to make it any better. You don't need to go that far. And I think that's really interesting because I've seen no meat on the bone, save a couple of pay, you know, let's release some prisoners, great, and let's, and let's make a couple of huge pay rises which are going to bite us on the backside at some point. Yeah, the, um, I think the Channel Crossings has been sort of one of the most disappointing elements of, um, of the first month and a bit of Labour government because it's obviously a huge issue and it has since immigration risen to the top of the public's um, sort of salience of issues and what they want um, the government to focus on. Um, it, the, the trend has roughly continued since the Tories uh, left government, so it's basically going at the same rate. We are promised this new border security commander um, by Keir Starmer, but you know, that recruitment process has taken more than a month now. And For what? A, a, a bloke to run it or a yeah. lady to run it? That, that doesn't tell me uh, how the 170,000 are going to be processed. I know, and, th and this is what they're saying. You know, they are going to um, ramp up processing um, of current asylum seekers who are in the UK. Um, the issue is that you are basically then, by default, accepting that a lot of them will stay. And the grant rate is currently about 65%. So if you're saying the 90,000 asylum seekers and currently growing who are already here, 65% are allowed to stay, then yes, you will, def you will be able to deport maybe about 30,000 of them, but 60,000 are going to get to stay. And if you're a migrant in France thinking, actually, I might take those odds, you know, if there's, if there's a chance of either getting sent back or being able to stay with full working rights, full living capabilities and everything else that comes with it, then 65% isn't a, isn't a bad Where chance. Where does it end, Jack? I tell you what, you happy to stay there a sec? It's got yeah, a Mackles feel. Uh, Bill, you're on tour drive. Couple of minutes. Jack Elsom's here. What you got, pal? Hello? Hello? Yeah, it's Bill here. How are you doing? I'm all right, mate. What you got? Two minutes, go. OK, um, I'm just going to begin with one simple sentence. There are no easy solutions to complex problems. Um, I'm listening to a lot of shouty politics at the moment. I'm, I'm going to confess I voted Conservative in the last election, and if there was a general election tomorrow, I'd vote Conservative again for all their faults. Uh, I, I respect what reform have to say, but... Let, let, let's deal with some simple truths, Jeremy. First of all, the reason why these people are crossing the channel on boats. First of all, they don't have visas. Why don't they have visas? Because they don't come from countries from, that need asylum. They don't have uh, the sort of background that are bringing skills to the country. So they might be escaped prisoners. They might be from whatever background. But broadly speaking, they are arriving illegally by risking their necks and paying a fortune to arrive on our shores in a rubber dinghy with 60 other people in a boat that's probably uh, insured for four people. So they arrive here. Some of them might 
think that they've got an infrastructure to try and get into. Uh, Albanian residents, uh, that the family that they know, uh, Libyan family that they know, they're going to try and make their own way. But some are stopped and they're taken internally. So what I'm actually hearing at the moment is we're going to send them home. We're going to process them. We're going to talk to them. We're going to find out where they're from and then we're going to send them home. Are they going to tell the truth? Broadly speaking, Jeremy, when they've actually gone through all these hoops in the first place to arrive on Pevensey Beach or wherever it is and walking ashore, having risked their ruddy necks over 40 miles worth of the busiest shipping lane on the ruddy planet and then say, well, yes, actually, I'm from Albania. If you get me back to Tirana, that would be fantastic. No, I don't think, think they should be I'm given actually... a choice. I don't know why we're having a debate. I'm sorry. I, for yeah, me, it's... Well, where would you send them? Where would you send them? Back to the countries that they belong. Which country is that? The country of their origin. Well, How do you find that out? Because they're throwing their passports away. Jack? Yeah, it... They've thrown their passports ab- uh, over, over, the, over the side of the boat. So that they're clearly a Muslim, let's say, or somebody from Eastern Europe or North Africa or even further Eastern uh, Albania. I'm sorry, I'm from Syria and I'm gay. So like, that's it. That, that's the information the processing officer is given. What do you do then? So very quickly, because I haven't got a lot of time, what would you do differently, pal? Because all sorts of people, I and my, myself involved... A clue. You haven't got a clue. As I said, there are no easy solutions to complex problems. So we've got to stop shouting at each other. We need to come up with some technology that allows us to, broadly speaking, interrogate these people properly. I think we need to grow a pair of... I think we need to grow a pair of whatever you want to call it, as a man with only one. I think we need to understand that, yes, we could and should do as a, as, a, as a country be as humanitarian as we can. But I do think, and I said it about the riots, thank you, Bill in Macclesfield, I do think we should also, I hate the phrase, can't think of another one, we need to look after our own as well. And I think one of the things that I, I said already to you is I, I got really frustrated about the riots. I don't like those thugs, lock them up, right? But they're not, you can't tell me that everybody that protests to illegal immigration is now a far right. You weren't here last week, you were on holiday, I had a nurse on from Wales. Mm. 48, hates what's happening to the NHS, hates the fact that immigrants are coming in and people that she sees and family she knows are missing out. It's too scared to, to, to protest now because she'll be deemed far right. She said, I'm not far right at all. Definitely... I've just paid my tax for 30 years and I'm not going to be treated like this. And I think that's really important. There's definitely a couple of strands to what happens to the riots. Uh, I think most people recognised this a few weeks ago, is that you do have the violent thugs uh, who are out there for a tear up. You've got teenagers who are bored in the summer holidays who are basically going um, to try and give the police a run around. We will have millions of people at home watching this play out on TV going, these thugs don't represent me at all and I abhor the violence, but do I feel like I've been ignored on issues like legal and illegal immigration for the past 10, 15, 20, 30 years? Absolutely, yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I think it's incumbent on politicians to, to recognise that, and many people will feel um, very aggrieved by the present situation. And I don't think it is any... Um, you know, is any coincidence that yeah, immigration has leapt up the um, you know public salience uh, of, of issues in the in the past fortnight or so? Um, but but as um, as the, as the caller rightly pointed out, it is such a difficult sphinx-like problem to solve because you know even if you have people here, uh, it's very difficult to deport people if they come from places like. Syria, Iran, Afghanistan, but you're not going to strike deals with the Taliban. You're not going to strike deals with the with the mullahs in Iran, are you? So it's very difficult to but, be able to but send I people back. I asked very quickly because Jodie's going to be. What would happen? Sorry, this is going to down a lead balloon with all the lefties, the bedwetters. What would happen if you weren't allowed to come in? Sorry, you're not allowed to come in because we cannot afford to look after our own people. What would happen at that point? Well, it depends. They'd go somewhere else. Well, no, but what's it, wrong with well, that? Well, exactly. It depends how you try and police that. Would you start turning people around in the yes. channel? Well, that you know, that could yeah, that will put the navy on, and, and border force in a situation where if someone is in the water, for example, do they just leave them there? Like it's it's, it's incredibly uncomfortable, no, complex leave, issue. Will you usher boats back to where they came from? I did, my my point is very relevant, by the way. I, in my mind, mm. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. If I was escaping a war torn country, the first country I got to that's safe, I go, oh, fantastic, and pitch my tent. But I'd probably want a four star hotel, so I'd come to Britain. And, and, and this is. And the, if we could afford that, I wouldn't the, mind that. But we can't, and yeah. people are missing out. That's my point. Jack, you're alleged. So good to have you back, son. Uh, are you all right to come on again? Brilliant. We give me. Can we have a shit of a round of applause? <laughs> uh, the amazing Jack Elson. Thank you very much indeed.